Cedric Jones, Senior Director of Youth Football for the National Football League. We're here today to introduce you to the NFL's High School Player Development Program. We're here at Rutgers University, the birthplace of college football. The NFL's High School Player Development Program is a program focused on teaching young people, incoming sophomores to seniors, for how many times to take the SAT, transcript evaluation, and how to meet NCAA clearinghouse requirements. Here with Coach Ciano today from Rutgers University, I'd like to thank Coach Ciano and his staff for putting together these instructional tapes to teach you how to play the game of football. CJ, it's a great honor and a privilege for our staff to have the opportunity to do this, to bridge the gap between the NFL and all these great student athletes. We look forward to becoming more involved each year. Thank you, Coach Ciano. And again, welcome to the NFL's High School Player Development Program. Hello, this is Darren Rizzi, linebacker coach here at Rutgers University. And what I'm going to go through here are uh, some of our basic drills, our daily drills, uh, in regards to tackling and turnovers. Uh, there's six different drills here. Usually on a daily basis, we'll get a chance to do three of them. And so uh, as you guys look at these drills, uh, I would just feel free to you know, pick any three during the course of the day. Now, normally we'll do two of the tackling and one of the, one of the turnovers. Uh, but again, obviously, whatever you guys think is uh, best for, for you, uh, that's what I would use. We're going to start here with um, simple tackling drills. One, uh, this first drill is called come to balance. And uh, I'll show you the drill. Now, first things first, what we'll do with this drill is we'll actually uh, start it a little bit tighter, and then we'll elongate it uh, to this distance that you see here on the, on the picture. Uh, so you can certainly tighten this down and actually start both players, both the ball carrier and the tackler uh, with their shoulders already turned. So if we were going to start it, let's say about right at that position, I would maybe start the drill, and then, and then as, as the players get better, you can move them back to a greater distance. What we're really trying to accomplish here on the come to balance drill is we're teaching the tackler that when he's in the in open space coming at a distance, he wants to come under control before he makes contact to obviously to avoid you know, any kind of cutback or him being out of control. I think it's very important to understand that, uh, first off, coaching the running back or the runner is just as important as coaching the tackler. So we'll start with that, uh, that player there. You can see how we have the, the cones set up out there on the numbers, one at the top of the numbers and one at the bottom. Really, those cones are for the ball carrier more than they are the tackler. It's kind of a landmark so that the ball carrier can take it through, and they can always, you know, once we get good at the drill, they can always cut back to test our, our, you know, our feet of the tackler. So the ball carrier is going to have the ball on the outside arm. And as you can see, as, as we start to come into a situation where we're going to make contact, the ball carrier is going to throw the inside arm up to avoid injury both to the tackler and the ball carrier. And it also enables the, the tackler to form fit right there, enables him to form fit into the tackle. So like I said, if we started the drill approximately about this distance, what we want to do is, we're teaching, again, you want the ball carrier to be a little bit out in front of the tackler. As the tackler comes close, he wants to have his eyes right here on the near hip. He's going to eyeball the near hip of the, of the running back or the runner with the ball. And you can see as he becomes close, he's going to start to come to balance. The steps that he takes right prior to contact are the come to balance steps. He's under control. His feet are underneath him. It's kind of a machine gun type of fire or patter of the feet, however you like to describe it, right before contact. Again, near hip. And then once he comes to make contact, he's going to transition from the near hip, his eyes that is, from the near hip to the football and then bite the ball, get the head across and run his feet. And you'll see, we'll, we'll talk about the bite the ball drill here momentarily. Again, here's another example. So again, if we're going to start them about that distance away, right about there, you can see their both shoulders are already be turned. The ball carrier is using the cones, again, two yards apart. So if you're doing the drill in the middle of the field, two yards apart. And there's also a cone there on, I don't know if you can see it, on the 30-yard line, about two yards below the numbers. Again, just giving the ball carrier a reference point. You'd like the ball carrier to get his arm up here a little bit more right there. But again, watch the feet of number 47. He starts to come to balance. He's under control. He should be looking at the near hip of the, of the runner and then transition into the ball as he comes close and bite the football, run his feet, and wrap. Again, this is just a, the same drill from a distance. And again, I, again, when we initially first teach it, I would close the drill down.
Again, here's just another good picture of it. So again, if we're going to start in this position about that approximately that far apart, again, 25, watch his feet. Starts to patter the feet. Look at the near hip, and again, the ball carrier right here to avoid injury to both. I, I really suggest you get to have the ball carrier lift that inside arm so the, so the tackler can form fit it. It just creates good habits. Now, obviously, if in this situation, if the ball carrier ends up all the way out in front, that's why I would close the drill down, because really here, this is a bad rep. 47 never breaks stride. He never really has to come to balance because the ball carrier is that far out in front. Again, that's the disadvantage when you start to drill this far away. The advantage of starting it closer is you'll have, be able to work on the exact technique you want to work on, which is to come to balance. The next drill is bite the ball. Bite the ball is a technique that we use when we tackle. And this drill is solely, solely for the purpose of working at the end of the tackle and getting in position to bite the football. Now you've heard you've heard coaches talk about and I know we all we've all done it at one time or another. We we actually give the guys too much to think about when we talk about tackling. We talk about, you know, eyes up, bend your knees, bend your hips, shoulder pads down, bowl the neck, all those things. You can really accomplish all those things by just merely saying bite the ball because in order to bite the ball the player has to do that. And we're talking about literally having both eyes on the football, coming into great position, and literally, if you didn't have a helmet on, your mouth would literally hit, hit the, uh, literally bite the ball. And you can see we're in good position right here. So what we do is we start to drill. You can see the ball carrier and the tackler are 10 yards apart. The cones are at a 45-degree angle. You can see that we give them a, an aiming point at a 45-degree angle, and that's where we want to have them bite the football right in that position. Now, again, it does make sense if you want to close the drill down, if you want to start the players about this far initially, about two and a half yards uh, from the line, about five yards apart. Certainly makes a lot of sense. Initially, again, you can see the ball carrier has the inside arm up to avoid injury. You can see the coach behind is looking solely at number 11's eyes to make sure he has his eyes open all the way and he's putting his mouth right on the football. Again, you want to see the mouth go right to the football, and you really want to see the player shoot the arms. Right here, we would coach 25 to shoot the arms through and grab cloth on the back side of the jersey. Now, is it realistic to get that on a tight game jersey? It might not, but what you'd create is very good habits. You create the player shooting his arms through and getting in a great wrap position and now running his feet on contact, obviously. But again, the coach in the back really wants to look for eyes on the ball, and what you'll get in this drill is if the ball carrier is really not holding it, if the face mask hits the football, you should see some balls actually come out in this drill. Again, this is a bad job by the runner because he doesn't ha ha get the inside arm up. You really want to get the inside arm up to avoid, you know, really more for the tackler than the ball carrier. But it avoids injury for the ball carrier and enables that the tackler to really form fit it up. And again, you can see this is a situation where we just close it down a little bit. And again, I would, I would suggest that we, you really start to drill a little tighter like, like we do here. Start it tighter and bite that ball. Again, it's a little tough to see, but again, you should have a coach behind looking at the eyes of the tackler and make sure he has them right on it and the mouth is, really, is literally making contact with the football if, if the player didn't have to have a helmet on. Okay, getting to the turnovers. The first drill we have here is, is a drill called we call scoop and score. All right? You can see in the bags, if you just focus on the agile bags right now, we have a player that goes over the agile bags. A coach will roll the ball out, as you can see right there about the hash. And we teach a scoop, and we have a trail player. Now, again, guys, this is an option that you have. If you feel, if you feel that this is not something you want to do with a pitch at the end, but we will pitch the ball to a player in behind, keeping in phase, obviously, behind, so you can pitch it and lateral it back and have that player score into the end zone. So we start to drill about the 20-yard line. Now let's talk about the different coaching points with scooping the football. As the player comes through the agiles, you, can, you should give them all different kinds of rotation on the ball, spin the ball, twist the ball, bounce the ball, because there's all different ways a fumble could happen, as we all know. 
But as the player approaches right here, and I know it's a little bit of a distance, but you really want to teach the player to surround the football. That ball should be in between their feet, and the backs of their hands should be on the ground as they scoop. You really should have different coaches there looking to scoop. I mean, looking for the scoop, looking for the backs of the hands on the scoop, and really focusing on the player getting the ball in between their feet. All right, that's the best position that you can be in to scoop. You know, no different than a shortstop playing a ground ball. Trying to get in front of the ball, scooping the ball up, and then you get the good pitch. Again, you have the agiles there just to try to create some type of, of um, play in between. You know, you, you, have to, you have to obviously go play the play first, and all of a sudden the ball's on the ground, so you create some agility there as well. You can see the coach here that, that's uh, throwing the balls out. They, you know, he bounces one, then he'll roll one. You get a bunch of different things. You know, a fast one where he's got to move. Again, keep the ball in between the feet, backs of the hands on the ground. It looks like the player right here does a good job of bending his knees, which is another important part. Obviously, to be able to have the backs of your hands on the ground, you've got to be able to bend your knees. Bend down, scoop it up. You never want to, you know, when we have a fumble in the open field, we do not teach our players to jump on the ball. We teach them to scoop and score. Probably the most important part of this entire drill is the setup. You can see all the managers relaying the balls back in. If you can have all the coaches, get a line of coaches, that really makes a drill go smooth and makes a drill go faster. You can get a lot of reps that way. You can see just this is the same drill, just the other direction. Again, good job here of surrounding the football, bending my knees, eyes on the ball, backs of the hands on the ground, pitch players stay in phase. Again, I'll reemphasize, if you want to just start by doing this drill without the pitch player, it would make a lot of sense with, with the young guys. This is what we teach here at Rutgers with the scoop and the pitch. And we get that last one cut off, so I'll go back a little bit. The scoop right here and the pitch. So if you want to teach this, the pitch a part of it, obviously that player's got to stay behind for, the, you know, for a legal lateral, and then they end up both scoring through the end zone. Okay, the next drill here is a simple strip drill. And we teach a couple different things on the strip. You can see 35 here, obviously, is, is the strip, man. Anytime we're chasing from the football side, I'm on the, ball, I'm on the side where the ball, uh, the ball carrier has the football in that side arm. All right, so obviously this player is coming in from the right side and the ball carrier has the ball in the right arm. We're teaching our player to come in and work the football over the top and pull it out. You want to try to get in position where you get the tip of the ball to pull it out. All right. One of the most important coaching points that we believe is as you come into strip, you do not want to make contact with the off arm first. It should either be simultaneous contact or the strip hand first. You know, realistically, the, the arms will probably come in right about the same time. But what you do not want to have happen in this picture is the left arm hitting first because the, naturally the ball carrier is going to pull the ball in once he feels contact. We're going to get a strip. The second man in, the scoop and score man, is going to, again, work on scooping and scoring. Keep the ball in between his feet, backs of the hands on the ground, great knee bend, and the other player, and you don't see it in this picture, but you get, you get the other player really getting used to blocking the ball carrier, the guy that was the ball carrier. Again, you can see a good job here by... By the strip man, he should get a little more over the top with the left arm after the right arm makes contact. But again, we're pulling it out. You can see number 10 here in a trail position. Scoop and score 43. Great job at blocking the ball carrier. Scoop and score, and we're going. In between, backs of the hands on the ground. Looks like a real good scoop. Bending the knees, balls in between my feet, backs of the hands on the ground, scoop and score. Again, you can see 39 here blocking the ball carry after the strip. Again, watch the hands come in. Again, I think it's important to make sure you get the off arm around after the, after the, the uh, strip arm makes contact because if you don't strip it, obviously you've got to get the guy in the ground. Once the ball comes out, he blocks, scoop and score. Nice thing is you get a lot of different things in this drill, obviously. You get, you're working on the strip, you're working on the tackle, you're working on the scoop, you're working on the score, and you're working on blocking. All different things in a very simple drill. 
Okay, this next drill is, is second man in. Okay. What I would do to start this drill, guys, is I would have I would have the inside guy or the guy away from the ball actually make contact first. Okay, this is really the second part of this progression. I would have the, the, the first guy come in and make contact and holding him up, and the second guy, 44, should not be making contact at the same time. Realistically, you want to have the first ball carrier holding him up and the second guy in working the ball. And you can see he has his hand on the back and the inside arm working for the point of the ball and pulling it out. Pulling it out, and then he's going to do the same thing, scoop and score. The other guy's going to turn and block the ball carrier. You can see 59 going to block. 44 going to scoop and score. Again, second man in, outside arm on the back, inside arm, digging in, pulling the tip of the ball, and yanking it out, pulling it out hard, really ripping it through. The last drill here, guys, is really just a basic fumble recovery drill. And although it may sound simple, we think there's a real, real art to recovering a fumble. All right, so this is actually, we're going to teach every player on the team, offensively and defensively, how to recover a fumble. And you can see here, just these are actually the offensive linemen. All right, so we're going to roll a ball out. The ball, all of a sudden, the ball shows up. Very realistic to a play, right? Number 70 is blocked, and all of a sudden, the ball shows up. He's got to know how to recover it. Most important points, most important coaching points about recovering a fumble. First and foremost, once you have the ball, obviously suck it in and cover the points. Get the points of the ball covered. Next thing is you want to bring the knees up into a fetal position. Really tuck the knees as tight as you can. We want to close our eyes and close our mouth. We all know on the bottom of a pile anything can happen. Guys, maybe reach into my face mask trying to poke me in the eye, trying to fish hook my mouth, whatever it may be. I want to close my eyes and squeeze them. I want to close my mouth and squeeze it. And again, that's once after I have the ball covered, fetal position with all the points covered. I want to pull my knees up tight, tighten every muscle in my body, and really tighten up my butt cheeks. Squeeze. Squeeze everything together. You don't want guys on the bottom of the pile trying to go in and grab your groin or whatever it may be. So you're really squeezing everything. Eyes, mouth, butt cheeks. And again, we work this with everybody on the team. Now, what number 63 is doing a good job of pulling in here, but you never want to roll to your back and expose the football. So right here, 63 should just stay right there, right there, and, and right now get in the fetal position and start to squeeze, cover the points. You do not want to roll over because now, obviously, you expose the ball to the pile. But at that point, he's got to squeeze it, fetal position, cover the points, eyes, mouth, butt cheeks, squeeze them all tight. And again, you can see here we're working on the offensive line. I think it's real important to at least one time go over and work on – Fumble recovery with every position on the field, and that's what we do here at Rutgers. You can see we have the other two players trying to work the ball out. Really have them try to reach in. They see the points, try to pull it up and working it. I know this is Coach Flood's favorite drill, our offensive line coach. He loves this drill. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. And, uh, again, I, I think the, the finer points there, the coaching points that we've made, I think can really help you. And uh, I think, it, again, it's important. You don't, I don't think these are drills you need to do every single day, uh, not all of them. But, you know, we feel strongly defensively that you want to work those two tackling drills, come to balance and bite the ball every day, and then one of the turnovers, either, either the, the strip drill, second man in, fumble recovery. I think that uh, if, you, if you work on those things, you really see some, some results. Thanks again. First drill of the day is footwork. What we try to do is simulate – a wide receiver's release and wide receiver's footwork. So basically, there's no particular stance in this drill. All we're doing is worrying about pushing off our front foot, keeping straight down the line. Now, when we make our break, everybody here's left foot is what we call our break foot. And that means we're going to get seven cleats into the ground and slightly open our hip as we get that foot into the ground. Everybody's right foot is their drive foot. That's the foot that they're going to transfer their weight to from their brake foot, accelerate out on a 45-degree angle. And we'll use a ball, one to the right and one to the left. Now, this drill, there is a little bit of a stance involved. 
uh, depending on your right or left corner, if your left corner, your left foot's up, right corner, your right foot's up, safeties, it does not matter. All right? The left foot will be on a line. You'll have a heel to toe relationship with your right foot. Your knees will be slightly bent, chest over your toes, and you will push off your front foot. Your left foot, obviously, if you're the left corner, your right foot, if you're the right corner. Heel to toe relationship. About six inches apart. Safeties, it doesn't matter which foot they prefer up, the right or the left, but the same techniques involved. Now we just take the same drill we did, but we backpedal. So now we have a break foot and a dry foot here as well. This one here is what we call zero degree break, which is straight down the line. Everything we do is on a line to make sure our break foot and our dry foot stay on that line. We don't want to round any of our breaks. A ball is used here as well. Again, another zero degree break. Now we'll break on a 45. Again, drills done on the line. Break foot, dry foot. Just try to get seven cleats in the ground with your, with your break foot, your dry foot. Get it down on the ground as quick as you can. Transfer your weight and accelerate on a 45 degree angle. Again, using a football to be thrown. Now one to the left. Now in this drill here, there's really no difference for the safeties. The only difference for the corner, we're using what we call a bail technique. So now our stance has changed just a little bit. There's no heel to toe relationship. Our stance is parallel. The right corner will pivot off his right foot. The left corner will pivot off Excuse me, the right corner will pivot off his right foot. The left corner will pivot off his left foot. And they will get in a crossover run. Safeties are doing the same thing. Now, both corners, their break foot should both be their right foot, as you'll see. Right corner pivots off his right foot, left off his left. And a crossover run, again, using the right line. Now, both the corners' upfield foot will be their break foot. Drive foot will be the downfield foot. Same exact drill for the safeties. Always doing a zero degree break. Now what we do here is we work a speed turn. Corners are doing the same technique with bailing. They lose leverage on a receiver, so they have to speed turn to find them. When they have to speed turn to find them, they're going to switch to a break foot, drive foot now. Again, their upfield foot will be their break foot. Downfield foot will be their drive foot, working a zero degree break. Now, the corner to the left will really have to open his hip here to come out of his break. And the 45 will be called away from the quarterback. The corner at the bottom here, which is the right corner, will have his hardest time with his hip, but he's still going to get that dry foot in the ground to come out of his break. And we go to the other side as well. Now, the left corner will have to open it. Have to, the right corner will have to really open his hip here. Right there. Always using the ball. Now, this drill is what we call a three-step drill. Uh, we're simulating the quarterback doing a three-step drop. The dummy simulates to the sled, simulates the receiver at a five-yard hitch. The corner's off at seven yards, inside leverage on the receiver. We're all simulating right now a left corner, so he's inside leverage of the bag. His left foot's up. He's going to be pushing off his left foot. And he's reading the quarterback for three-step. Once he th sees the quarterback with three-step, he's going to snap his head to the bag and drive to it and try to get there at the same time the ball arrives. The reason he snaps the head is to prevent any double moves. On his second step, he can look back for the ball. By that time, there's no double move. Now, if the quarterback simulates a five-step drop, which he's doing here, we want to make sure we snap our head to the receiver, and instead of going forward, we're going backward. 
and we're going to accelerate in our back pedal, keeping proper inside leverage on the receiver, and cover the man to man. Our eyes on the receiver. It's a good three step read there. Again, where the quarterback is, is the line of scrimmage. Where the dummy is, and her sled is five yards down the field to simulate a hitch route by the wide out, and there's DBs lined up at seven yards from the LOS line of scrimmage. Stances here are exactly the same stance that we did in our backpedal drills. There's a five step drop again. Now we uh, spin the sled around. Everybody now is a right corner. So again, the only difference is your right foot's up. Technique, leverage, everything else remains the same. Five-step drop. Three-step drop. As, as I said, the uh, defensive back is snapping ahead and driving first to the receiver <clears throat> to make sure there's no pump and go, slant and go. Hitch and go, et cetera. Once he's cleared that, he can go ahead now and look for the football. The thing we try to get him look for a lot is the quarterback. As the quarterback pops up right away, the ball is up in the air, and he's looking to throw that three-step release right now. Some quarterbacks keep their vision down the field. Some slightly open that left shoulder and get a pretty good read. We're not looking to tackle a slab. We're just looking to drive to make sure we, our eyes are going where they're supposed to be. Get another five-step drop. Three-step drop. The brakes they should be using here are the same brakes we do in that drill. This is a zero-degree brake. Brake foot, dry foot. It's a good job there. Okay. Get on to the second drill. Now we're not in a back pedal drill. We're in a bail drill. Just like the drill we talked about, stance, slightly shoulder width apart, no, no wider. This corner here is the right corner, so he'll be pivoting off his right foot. Number 11, the left corner, will be pivoting off his left foot. Right corner, right foot, left corner, left foot. Again, we use a line from the sideline so we can make sure all their footwork is, is, is on that line. We take the receiver on both sides, move him slightly in so the corner is outside leverage when he bails. And then we're going to run a number of different routes, keeping leverage, working the same footwork drill that we've done previously, except we're not backpedaling, we're working a bail technique. This corner here is going to get a slant off the bail, which is a tough route to cover, but it's got to get that up foot, feet, foot in the ground and drive. Left corner pivoting off left foot. Again, stance, no more than shoulder width apart. Keep the leverage on the receiver. Right corner, right foot. Again, this is nothing more than a drill that we do, except now we're using the receiver. It's a good job of this corner getting that left foot in the ground, opening that hip, getting that drive foot down and coming out of his break. There's no difference, except now we're just using the receiver. There's a zero-degree break. Again, it's decent footwork because his feet don't come off the line. Upfield foot, break foot. Downfield foot, dry foot. Transferring the weight to the dry foot. Upfield foot is his right foot. He's a little bit off the line. It's not such a good job. His hips are open too much. I'd like them to stay right in that white line and get that right foot on the white line. <clears throat> not off it as much as it is. Opens his hips, does a pretty good job after that. Zero degree break. 45 degree break. Again, got a slant, which is a hard one to cover. Guy has to get the right foot in the ground and drive.
one thing we do tell them is once they clear the three-step slant, they get to what we call level two area where they, they're down there, they're going to get a curl and out. They start to get what we call level three, which is a uh, post or a takeoff route. As long as they have good position on the receiver, they can start to look back for the football. All right, this drill here is working in cover two corner. What we try to do is show the same stance as we do in our man coverage. Seven yards from the line of scrimmage, inside or outside leverage, depending on the receiver. Our stance look exactly the same. That's our disguise. We don't want to give away a cover two or a man or a, or a, or a zone a look unless we know that uh, we want to walk up and bail a, a technique like that. If we're playing off the line of scrimmage, there's no difference in our stance. This is a left corner. His left foot's up, except his eyes are inside, so we do, we do the same thing when we play man because we're reading three-step here as well. But once we clear the three-step, we're going to squat down now and work our funnel. We're either going to get an uh, inside release, we're going to get an outside release, or we're going to get a receiver that sits down right on us, and we're going to have to uh, bail ourselves out of there. All right. We cleared the three-step. He has a five-step drop. The, receiver, the corner now is going to square up and work what we call the funnel. We like to get hands on the receiver, ride him, open our hip back to the quarterback, find out where number two is. Eyes back to the quarterback. Again, our stances, whether we're playing man or cover two, should look the same. Our feet should be moving. Corner's doing a good job here of moving his feet. And then he's got to, he's got to shuffle laterally, right or left, depending on the release of the receiver. We'd like to get hands on, get our hip back open, find out where the quarterback is, get our eyes back to him, and find out where the number two receiver is. And be able to break off the quarterback's throw. Here's what we call a smash route. The number one receiver comes down and sits down hard on the corner. Corner's going to open his hip and drive back. Eyes on the quarterback, looking for a number two receiver to come run on what we call a corner route. Here's an inside release by the, by the receiver. Same thing, corner squares up, slides lateral, nice and low with a knee bend, moving his feet off the square up. Eyes completely on the receiver, cannot split his vision. We want contact. As he comes off the contact, his eyes are going to go back to the quarterback, open, open his hip, find out where number two is, and be ready to break off the long arm action or the short arm action of the quarterback. There's an outside release. Decent job by the corner, squaring up. Eyes are where they're supposed to be. He's got a good knee bend. His feet are moving. Does a nice side lateral. Does Gets hands on. And uses the receiver to push off and start to get some depth and find out what's going back on inside of him. Now it's the right corner, so there's no difference. The right foot's up. Same stance. Again, this is all cover two zone. Majority of the time, he only gets three releases in cover two zone, inside or outside, or what we call a smash route where he's going to sit it down. And these are te techniques that we use to come off our jams. But we do like to get hands on receivers if we can. Okay, this is a drill we do with our safeties. What we do before the snap is we always give a cover two shell with our safeties. So if you're on the center and you're looking at us, we have two safeties, both at about 10 yards, 10 yards deep, and they will give you the appearance that we're in a cover two. Once the ball is snapped and we decide that we're not playing cover two, we're going to play a, a roll down safety. One of the safeties on either side will roll down. The other safety now has deep middle responsibility. So he's going to cross over one to the deep middle. As he's crossing over one to the deep middle, his eyes are going to be on the quarterback. Once he gets in the middle of the formation, he's going to square himself up, gain depth in his back, pedal eyes on the quarterback, break off the quarterback's throw, and make a play in the football. That's what this drill here is simulating. 
He's nothing more than a deep middle safety. Instead of lining him up right there, we cross him over running a snap of the ball to get where he's supposed to be. Giving a cover two look. Always trying to catch the ball at the highest point. A young guy there doesn't do a good job, catches in the bread basket. We want to get the ball at his highest point. Decent job here by him. Tuck it away, get up field and score. Coming from the right side as well as the left side. As this young man's crossing over, he's trying to get to the middle of the formation of the number one receivers. Eyes focusing on the quarterback. When he feels he's there, he's going to square up. Again, getting his deep middle third and break off the quarterback's arm. Track the ball the whole way. You become the receiver. You be the aggressor. You go get the football. Now we're working a straight cover two. So now we line up with the two safeties where they're supposed to be. Instead of the safeties one rocking down, one going to the middle. Both the safeties will backpedal and play cover two halves of the field. This is what this drill simulates a cover two safety. Now we just do one safety at a time. We don't work both safeties together. Same thing applies. Eyes on the quarterback, gain the depth in your backpedal. Open your hip. Try to catch the ball as high as point. One thing you don't want to do is read routes. You want to keep your eyes on that quarterback, and as soon as that ball comes off that quarterback's hands, you want to go get it. Highest point. Now, we play a little bit of what we call two-man. A two-man technique is now you're playing two deep safeties like you just saw, and instead of squaring your corner up and playing cover two, you get what we call a trail technique, which is inside leverage, about an arm's length away from your receiver, and we're going to play man-to-man -man with two safeties behind us. And this is a drill we use for our corners when we play two-man. There's no necessarily stance involved here, but what we're working on is technique as far as remaining inside leverage, an arm's distance away, and keeping ourselves in the trail technique. The red guys are simulating the receivers, the white jersey guys are receiving, are simulating the corners. Now, the football is, is where the ball is. So both these corners should be inside of the receiver and about an arm's length away, remaining in the trail technique. When the receiver stops, they should have that same relationship they had when they started. Right there. Because what we want to do now Depending on if the receiver continues vertical, we know we have help over the top. If the receiver breaks out, we want to undercut it. If the receiver breaks in, we also want to undercut it. We want to be underneath all routes. Again, we want to try to keep that relationship we had. Now, both the corners should be the inside here of the receivers. Now, if receiver breaks out, they should be underneath. No one may have help over the top. Here you see him getting set. Again, initially this corner here is in a good shape. That's about an arm, bent elbows distance inside away. Inside and about an arm's distance length. Try to maintain that relationship the whole way. He breaks down, you break down. You don't want to get too close. Corner breaks in, corner breaks out. You want to be underneath it. Hello, this is Darren Rizzi, linebacker coach here at Rutgers University. 
Uh, what I'm about to present here is what I believe to be a very good teach progression for young linebackers. Uh, what I've tried to do here is to demonstrate drills that can be used no matter what scheme a young linebacker is in and uh, try to model the techniques that we're teaching, uh, again, to fit in with any, any type of, of scheme that a defensive player would be in. Uh, what I've done here is try to keep these in order of the way I would teach them on a daily progression. Uh, if you can't get them all in in a particular day, then I think the ones in the beginning of the segment are more important than the ones later on. And uh, so really, again, I would kind of go one through, through seven in terms of order of progression. Uh, the first drill that we have here uh, is <clears throat> a simple drill we, that we call here the first step drill. And as you'll see here on tape, uh, we line the linebackers up. Uh, you, again, you can go, there's going to be some clips here where there's uh, two guys up at a time, possibly three guys up at a time. And you can see uh, we can get four guys working at the same time. Quite honestly, uh, you could keep lining up guys in rows. I think once you go past three guys at a time in a particular lane, uh, then you probably have too many. Uh, the, the most important coaching points in this drill, and the reason we call it the first step drill, is these linebackers right now are going to read, you know, no matter what you have your linebackers reading, whether it be down linemen, uh, whether it be flow, or whether it be one particular back, uh, I think you can just give them, as you can see, we have uh, two, two backs in the backfield that are simulating an eye backfield. We have linemen that are coming off the ball. So, again, no matter what the key and diagnosis is for the linebacker, uh, it's a good drill. I think it's very important in this drill to obviously have a, uh, a good visual key for the linebacker. And as you watch these four guys, what I've tried to do in all these drills is pick out uh, some good and some bad uh, so you can see what we're looking for and then other things that I would talk to the guys about uh, what they did incorrectly. I think if you look at the two linebackers in this picture on the right, I think both of those guys are doing the drill pretty well. They have flow their way. And again, if you want to have uh, somebody simulate a, a, a line movement or a running back flow, again, just to simulate movement, you want to really get the guy going downhill. Now, I've seen people do this drill before uh, with pushed up bags against guys' heels uh, so that they don't, you know, you can avoid drop stepping. I think what all four guys do in this drill a good job of is they're all coming straight downhill. Now, again, as I mentioned, I think the two guys on the right are pretty good. Their first step is coming downhill and it's gaining ground. If you watch the linebacker, uh, number 37 on the left in the back, what he's doing is he's crossing over with his first step. I think it's very important. One of the most important coaching points here is to make sure you're stepping with your play side foot. So this play is starting to everybody's right. I think it's important to come downhill with that first, that, that their right foot. The reason that's important is not necessarily for this particular full flow action, but if they get misdirection, they, don't, they can avoid crossing over. If you watch 37 right there on the left, he, first thing he does is cross over he's going to have a tough time on any misdirection back to his left-hand side. So that's really what you want to start. If you watch the first guy in line on the left-hand side, he understeps. The first thing he does is step under himself to come straight downhill. Although he is stepping with his right foot, it doesn't gain any ground. Again, here's really another picture of the same drill. Now, again, because the guys on the right have outside leverage on the play, it's okay that they step with that left foot. The two, jet, the two linebackers that are on the left, they both step with their right foot again. They both gain ground. I think both guys on the left are doing a good job. I think all actually all four guys, as you look at this, are actually gaining ground downhill and getting action towards the football. I think it's a good job right there of all, by all four guys. And again, you know, with every drill that we do, I think it's important to have a, a starting point and a finish. You know, although this is a one-step drill, that first step's the most important, you can see all four linebackers finishing downhill at the line of scrimmage. I think that's obviously a key point. You want to make sure you have a finish point with every, with every guy. You can see where I'm standing in the back so that I can see all four guys, all four linebackers that are going, I can see all four of them in my vision to see that first step. That's really the key. You know, we want to start off in the right position. Again, I haven't talked much about stance. You know, I think it's important to be comfortable. Your arms are hanging. You want to talk about the weight transferring on the balls of the feet. Feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart in a comfortable stance. 
Obviously, you want to have some, some flexion in your knees and get your hips down. But again, this drill is really concentrating on that first step. Now, here's a, here's a different look at it where you have three guys across. And again, I would go, I'd go no more than three deep, so you can have nine guys working at once. Now, again, watch the first step coming downhill. Watch the, the second man in the middle line. He drop steps. That's really what you're trying to avoid. You do not want to have a drop step as you're coming downhill. If you watch the two guys on the far left, I think both of them are doing the drill the right way. They both have an inside low shoulder. Their first step is downhill, gaining ground, and they're doing a pretty good job. Again, you want to keep pad level down. If you watch the first guy in the right-hand line, his pad level comes right up as he comes downhill. You want to really concentrate on keeping good pad level as you gain ground with that first step. Again, I would get all over the back guy in the line, uh, the line, last line, the third guy in the right-hand line. I'd get all over him about not finishing the drill. Yeah, he's taking his first step, but he's not finishing the drill at the line of scrimmage. And not only do you want to go with downhill plays, but I think here importantly is to get outside. So once you feel comfortable that the guys have learned the downhill action, both, you know, both directions, I think you want to start going to some outside flow and get them because what a lot get them going outside because what a lot of guys will do is on outside flow plays, because it's fast flow, guys have more of a tendency to start to drop step on outside flow plays more than downhill plays where they want to drop steps, they think they got to run a little bit faster to get outside. And you can see the three guys on the right here. Again, I call that an understep. The last guy in the right-hand line, the line closest to us here on the screen, he understeps to get going. Again, finishing through the line of scrimmage is the key. This next drill is called bite the ball as you can see. And the bite the ball drill is a close quarters tackling drill, which is going to involve a very important technique that we teach here at Rutgers, not only to the linebackers, but to all the defensive players and anybody involved in a tackle. And that involves biting the football. And, and really when the, the word bite, the, 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 excuse me, the term bite the ball comes from, is literally putting that face mask, putting your mouth right on the football. The good thing about this drill, guys, is it's closed quarters. You're teaching base fundamental tackling. And the nice thing about teaching bite the ball is that you're implementing all the different things you talk about with a, with a, young, with a young player or any player for that matter when you talk about tackling. If their mouth is on the ball, then you're gonna, you should be able to get all the different things you're talking about. Your hips down, your knees bent, your, your bow in your neck, your eyes are up, and you literally want to have the player focusing on the football as they're going to tackle. As you can see here, the, the guy that's simulating the ball carrier has the ball in the outside arm. Now, I would tell 35 right here that his, he needs to get his mouth or his face mask a little bit lower and literally put it on the ball. You should see in this drill often, if guys are doing it right, you should see balls coming out and balls being on the ground because the face mask is going right on the ball. Very important point of this drill as well is when you teach the guy to put his face mask on the ball, the tackler, you can see 52 here shoot his hands, and really what we're trying to do is grab cloth in behind. You know, everyone talks about wrap and the most important things about wrap. I think as you bring your hands through, you know, one of the things we teach here is as they bring their arms and shoot their arms through, they want to grab cloth in the back of that jersey and run their feet on contact. Grabbing cloth, that really assures you of, of, a, great, of a great wrap. That's a good look and play. That's a good look and bite the ball by 47. You can see his, his whole posture of his body right there. Right there with his face mask on the ball. He's shooting the arms through, but he's bowling his neck, and all those things are happening just by using that simple expression, bite the ball. And you can see literally he is biting that ball. On contact, he might get a little wide in his base initially, but again, you can see where I'm standing to be able to, I'm, and all I'm doing at that point is looking at his eyes. I want to make sure that he literally is not closing his eyes. And if he didn't have a helmet on, he would literally, his mouth would end up right on that football. Again, I'm also looking for guys grabbing cloth. You can see that right hand coming behind. That hand should be grabbing cloth and he should be running his feet. 
and the reason I put this one on here is I would tell 50 right now that he's way too high. You know, he, he ends up biting the shoulder pad and not the football. All right, so that's an example of not a great one. He does do a pretty good job bringing his feet through and a pretty good job grabbing cloth in behind, but I want that face mask on the ball. I think one of the important points here, guys, is as you're teaching this, that ball carrier, the guy that's simulating the ball carrier, has that inside arm up to avoid injury. What you're doing is you're letting your tackler fit in nice there, and the, the, uh, the ball carrier has that left arm up to, to enable him to come in and get a real good fit so he can bite the ball, and it also avoids injury with the ball carrier. So he's not, he has that inside arm and takes the inside arm out of the, out of the picture so you're not getting guys getting banged up there. I think it's also important that you tell the ball carrier to stay erect. He doesn't want to lower the shoulder. And again, it's really more obviously this whole drill is for the tackler, not the ball carrier. You want to make sure you, you really emphasize that with the guys. This next drill here, open field tackle, is a great drill that we, and I do here almost every day uh, with my players because it really is a, a very realistic drill in space. And I think it's great for young players. Now, as you can see, the, the uh, man in white right here is the linebacker. The player in white, uh, the white jersey is the linebacker, and the player in red is the ball carrier. I don't know if you can see there, but on, uh, on the sideline, on the 20-yard line, there's cones, and we generally go between five and seven yards apart. Some, sometimes we'll make it a little bit bigger, but there's three cones along that 20-yard line as well as three cones along the 30. And if I can just pause it here momentarily, the three cones along the 30 and the three cones along the 20, the 20 is obviously where we're starting the drill, and the 30-yard line simulates one of two things. It simulates either the sideline or your help within the defense. And I think that's one thing that young linebackers uh, don't think about often enough, and it's something that we really teach here. The 30-yard line, the 30-yard stripe, I should say, simulates, like I said, either a sideline or another player. Now, it could be the, a linebacker squeezing it to a linebacker. It could be a linebacker squeezing it off to a defensive back. But it simulates your help. And we talk about the sideline always being the 12th man. I know a lot of people talk about that. But use the sideline as a tackler because obviously the, if the man with the ball steps out of bounds, the play is over. It's no different than being tackled. The key here is you want the tackler to really get his eyes on the near hip. That's probably the biggest coaching point for the tackler. You can see him in space. He, the tackler's doing a good job of coming to balance. There's no reason to be over-aggressive here knowing that you have that help outside, again, whether it's a player or the sideline. As you eyeball the near hip, it's very important if that hip comes back like it does right there that you don't let that running back cross back over your face. I would say right there that the shoulders of the tackler get too parallel with the linebacker. You still want to, or excuse me, with the running back. You still want to have a slight angle to decrease that cutback lane. And if he does cut back, his helmet should be on the other side. But again, I think the big coaching points here is see the near hip all the way. Don't never overrun the ball. So right here, as you see later in this, as the drill goes on, we almost overrun the football. And he gets himself too wide here at the end. You want to keep those feet moving. Again, keep harping to the linebackers that that 30-yard that, that line stripe or wherever you guys set the drill up, obviously, the ten, 10 yards apart, but emphasize that that's going to be your help. And there's no reason to overrun it. Here's another example. This, this, li this linebacker does a good job of tempoing out. Watch his feet. He's not over-pursuing. His shoulders are in good position. But right here at the end, he almost overruns it. Again, start to squeeze it off inside hip. And the other coaching point is you want to tackle half a man. If that 30-yard stripe represented a corner, let's say, in cover two, and this was a Sam or a Will in cover two, those guys are both going to tackle half a man. Obviously, the corner would tackle the outside half, and the linebacker would tackle the inside half. You never want to double contain. So if he overruns it, now you're double containing the ball. Again, it would be no different than squeezing it off in between two linebackers in a different, in say, that 4-4 scheme. Or if, he, if this is a sideline tackle, you never want to let that running back be able to cut back. So again, focus on the near hip. Here's the same drill, just going the other direction. Again, you can see pretty good tempo coming out. As you close down in space, come to balance, which means patter the feet. 
His shoulders are at a good angle. He never overruns the ball, and now he's trying to work his face mask across to bite the ball. That's a pretty good job of tackling half a man. I just like to see him in a better, little better body position on the tackle. But as far as his feet, his tempo, and his angle, all that's very good. Again, same drill the other way. You can see right here, good job of coming out, good tempo, good come to balance, good angle. And now again, as I squeeze that thing off and tackle half a man, that's a good position. That's right there is a good example. As you see right there, that's a good example of tackling half a man. Because if that 20-yard stripe was another defensive player, we would both be tackling half a man. We'd both be in good position. To me, this is a very good drill. <clears throat> Next, the track drill is going to simulate a linebacker coming downhill, whether it be inside or outside, and having traffic within his track. His track meaning, the track means you, you're going from point A to point B. So whatever it is, let's, let's go to the, the, uh, the tape here, the clips, and I'll show you what I mean. Let me pause it so I can explain the setup. As you can see, the, the guys with their backs to us are going to be five yards apart with, uh, with hand shields. Now, the way I like to carry the hand shield is press it tight against the chest. So if you do have to contact the shield, you're going to avoid injury. Now, you also don't want the man with the shield, the guy that's simulating the blocker, to extend the shield at all from his body if they do make contact. So you keep the drill as realistic as possible. You want, he wants to hug that shield against his body. You can see that the linebacker that's facing you is going to just basically read the flow. Now, 51 right now is simulating a running back. So really what you need is three guys that are going to act as offensive players with a linebacker. Now, as I started to say, the track is from point A to point B, and it is simulating the track between where you are and where you have to be, thus the track drill. So you've got to stay on your track. Now, preferably, what you'd like to do is, be is between the two blockers' feet, you'd like to put a cone. Now, we may have a flat cone there you may not see, or we just talk about intersecting the line. In this, in this case, you can see it intersecting the line. Now, basically, 51, who's simulating a running back, is going to start the drill. As, as the lineman sees the linebacker start his way, he will start downhill, and he's going to do one of three things. He's either going to go hard inside, hard upfield, or hard right at the running back. And in this case, if he goes hard underneath, he's going to dip and rip and finish the play downhill. Now, what I would tell the linebacker in this case, as he dips and rips, he's got to keep his eyes up so he can see the football. He does a pretty good job of lowering the shoulder. Big coaching point, we'll talk about this momentarily with another drill, is getting pointing getting your toes back upfield, making sure your toes are going upfield, not towards the sideline. So this man, 59, is on my track but he's underneath it, and if I can dip and rip with my inside arm and get to my gap and finish the rep, that's what I like to do. You would like to finish this drill right over where the lineman started, and that simulates your gap. Now, again, we have a cone here and a line intersection on the yellow and white line, but you'd like to see the linebacker finish right over the cone like he does right here. This is actually a real nice job. Again, you can see we start the flow one way, to get the linebacker going, once 58 in this picture sees movement out of the linebacker, he starts, and again, again, you can see him go underneath, and I want to see that linebacker stay on that track. Point A to point B, get his toes right up, and he should go right down that line. What he does a good job of here is getting his toes back down the field and scraping for skin. Again, you can see the dip and rip. You want to keep your eyes up. Have your eyes up and always seeing the football. A lot of young linebackers, as they go to dip and rip, are going to keep their put their eyes on the ground. Keep your eyes up so you can see the football. Again, same action. Lyman's underneath. We're dipping and ripping over the top. Again, he does a good job of finishing right over the cone. He stays on the track. You can see the cone where he started and the cone where he finishes, and that's a good rep because he's finishing right over the top of the cone, right on his track. And now his toes are going upfield, not towards the sideline. Now here's an example of now on your track, the lineman is high, and now you're going to dip and rip with the other shoulder, with your outside shoulder. Or obviously this is a
great inside linebacker, for example, it would be his inside shoulder, but it's just the opposite sh shoulder, as you can see. The linebacker's high. Now, again, this is the same player as before. I would tell the linebacker, again, it looks like from this angle, it's tough to tell, but it looks like he's looking at the ground. He does a good job of staying on his track, but again, watch him, watch him finish. I don't want him to finish with his, at a 45-degree angle. I want him to get himself back downfield and get his toes upfield, not towards the sideline. And what you want to really tell the guys is if they're going at that angle and they get kicked out, there's going to be a huge running lane either inside or outside of them. Again, he does a good job of finishing over the cone, but again, this is an example of how I would want him to finish right here. He does a good job of finishing over the track, but now I don't want him to finish at that angle. Get back up the field, toes up the field. Again, the guy's high. He does a good job of finishing over the track, and he starts to work his toes back up the field. It could be a little bit tighter. I think his dip and rip is good. You know, the one thing that young linebackers want to do is when they dip and rip, they want to they want to overemphasize it. A good dip really is a guy running full speed. At the last second, he can just get that dip in. This this might be a little bit too much out of this linebacker with his right arm. A little bit unrealistic. Again, I think the the most important points for the guys that are not running the drill, the the offensive scouts, are that you start to flow and you get a good tempo. And that the lineman with the bags with the shields. They go on first movement right there, as you can see, on first movement. Is once you feel that the guys are doing that pretty good, the next part of it is when the lineman is on your track. You're going downhill to run through a gap and to get to your run fit, and you encounter a lineman on your track. We teach butt and press. Now, this is the reason you want to have those guys holding a shield to avoid injury, but we teach butt and press. The first one I'm going to show you here is, is not a good button press. And I believe the second one I'm going to show you is a, better, is a better rep. This linebacker has the right idea. He does want to button press, but a couple of things. Button press means butt with the head and press with the hands. Now, obviously, you want to get your hands close together, thumbs up, elbows tight, and press that lineman's butt back into the gap, back into the hole. You want to compress. This is one of those situations where if you went to run over the top, he may wash you by the play, and if you went to run, run underneath, he would do the same. He'd wash you into the line of scrimmage to create a running lane. So your best bet at this point, and it's got to be a quick decision, is to butt him, press him back into the gap. Let's watch the next one. This is a better job. Although I'd like to see this guy get, keep his feet moving on contact, he's better with his hands. You can see him butting with the head. Right on the chest, his elbows are in tight, his, uh, his hands are tight together, and now he's going to run that guy back in good arm, a good hand, and arm extension after contact. What you'd like to see this guy do a better job of is on contact, not stop his feet. You have to stop and restart. See, he stops and then restarts. You want to see all one fluid motion. The good job he does is he presses him off so he can find the football. Press the lineman off, extension in my arms, and now I can find the ball and go off and play it. This next drill, guys, is, uh, we have a one-man sled. If you don't have the ability to have the one-man sled, really what you're talking about using here is probably a, a bag or a man with a shield. If you have the ability to use the one-man sled, by all means, I would use it. Now, really what you're looking for here in this drill this is a take-on drill. You know, we, it said here one-man sled, but really this is a take-on drill. You're just working on take-ons. Whether, whether it be taking on a fullback, taking on a lineman, it doesn't matter. I think the key point, the key coaching point in take-ons is you want to be able to take things on just like this guy does a great job of with the same shoulder and same leg. Same leg, same shoulder. Watch on contact. He's bringing the same leg same shoulder through contact. So if you want to, again, if you don't have the ability to have the one-man sled and you want to close this up a little bit, the key is to take it on, same leg, same shoulder. Now, obviously, pad level is very important. You've got to be able to keep the eyes up. When we do use a sled, I don't mind 
if their arms end up around the bag. It doesn't matter to me if they end up in a tackling position. The key for me is same leg, same shoulder, feet moving on contact, and obviously leverage. And I think this is actually the best rep we're going to see of this of all the ones we're going to look at. That's a nice job. You want to see a better tempo come out. This guy's, this guy's tiptoeing out of his stance a little bit. He does get good leverage going on contact. Let's watch it. Same leg, same shoulder. What happens is if you get the opposite shoulder and the opposite leg at the same time, you don't generate the same amount of powder with the same half of your body. You want to take this thing on with the same half. You want that front side, that, that uh, take on leg to be forward. And really that the outside leg or the away leg should be almost off the ground, just like it is right here as this guy makes contact. Now, again, he stands straight up on contact. That's a poor job on contact. You can see his hips roll through, and now he's, now he's erect and standing straight. If you want to keep the leverage like the last guy did. Again, pad level too high. This is one that you, look, you would coach up. He takes on right there with the opposite shoulder, opposite leg. And you can see the difference. I want everybody to be able to see a clip. And, again, you would coach this guy to keep his pad level down a lot more. Again, same thing. And what happens is if you do have the one-man sled and they don't do same shoulder, same leg, the sled will start to turn on them, which is a good indicator. Again, if you don't have the capability of having a one-man or using a one-man, again, I would use a stand-up heavy dummy or a man with a shield. Again, again, a, a rep where you would teach a guy to keep his pad level down through contact. Again, you can see here, on contact, same shoulder, same leg. You can see the leverage. Again, I don't care about the arms coming through. Really working on a, a couple different things here. But th what this player does is on contact, look at those feet moving. That's a nice job of the feet moving on contact. Again, you're never really going to move a man that far. But what it does is it creates a habit of on contact moving your feet through, whether it be tackling, taking on a block, what have you. Again, number 50, again, with a pretty good rep. This next drill is a scrape for skin drill. And let me pause it here while we, while we get the setup going first. The way you want to set this drill up is ideally you'd like to have a bag. In this, in this case, you can see we have a pop-up dummy that's going to move and be able to pop right up on contact. You may not have that luxury. If you do, it's the best thing to use. If you do not... And you have to use, I would just use a regular stand-up dummy and have somebody ready to pick it up and hold it back up in the same position where you left off. Where you'd like to have those cones is a yard inside on both ends, four yards apart, a yard inside of the bag. Now, what you're going to simulate here, and the reason this drill is good is no matter what defensive scheme you're in, it's a great simulation of getting downhill and having to scrape around a block or around a defensive player to hit your run fit. What you're working on here is a couple of different things. Number one, you want to be able to stay tight to whatever it is, the edge of the defense. It may be running through an inside gap, an outside gap. It doesn't matter. But what you want to do here is stay tight. And again, the word scrape for skin or the term scrape for skin is staying as tight as you can and literally scraping the inside half of your body against that, whether it's a defensive player or an offensive player, but staying as tight as you can so there's no space, no running lane, between the, ed the edge of that block and yourself. Now, the key coaching components here are, as you can see, the player coming around, number one, those feet should never stop. And those toes should be working back upfield, no different than we were talking about in the track drill. This is a little different than the track drill now because that person is not trying to block you. Whatever that edge is, whether it's the outside, outside or inside edge of a gap or the outside edge of the defense, Whoever that player is, that whatever is simulating that dummy, they are not trying to block you. So as you stay tight to them and you come through, you want to get those toes going back up the field. You should never really see those toes pointed outside. And you want to finish this drill back through the cone. Obviously, you want to keep your eyes up to see the football. Again, we talked earlier about the dip. 
That dip should happen right at the last second. That's a pretty good job right there. Let's watch the next one. Here's a little better angle. Again, this player does a good job of not stopping his feet. Watch the feet first. They never stop. And he does a real nice job of finishing through the cone. You can see at the very last second, he goes to dip the left shoulder. And he works those toes back towards the cone. Really what we call that whole process of bending that thing is running the banana. You know, they're obviously simulating a banana-shaped object from point A to point B. And as they run back across the cone, they want to run that banana. And you can see the scrape for skin as you're scraping for skin against the edge of that bag. You'd like to see the pad level get a little bit lower right here from the inside shoulder. Just a little bit more, but that, what this player does a good job of is staying tight. Again, his feet never stop. He's finishing right through the finish point, exactly where you want. If the linebacker doesn't finish through the finish point, he finishes way outside, you've got to explain to them that that's going to be a running lane. If they come around the edge of a block and they get kicked out, there's going to be a seam in between them, which is the reason they want to stay nice and tight and finish on the other side. Again, he also does a good job of getting those toes up the field. Not enough, not enough on the dip here, but again, the feet are good. At the last second, you want to get the dip and bring that arm through. What, they, what he is doing a good job, again, is finishing back over the cone. He is running that banana, running the hump. A lot of young players and, and even college players here, they're going to want to duck their head just like this guy does right here and lose sight of the ball. It's very important to be able to run this technique and keep your eyes up so you can, you can have sight of the football the entire way. We're coaching our guys all the time to keep their eyes up. A lot of guys want to bury themselves into this, into this technique. They want to bury their head and bury their body. Keep your eyes up. Scrape for skin. What this player does a great job of right here is keeping his leverage down keeping his body down, and he has very good body position. Here's just a, another rep from the other side. And this player is, is, is not naturally running. All right? he's, he's running to run the drill, not running to run a, a play. You want to just stay as natural as you can and simulate a play. Again, this is a real nice rep and a good angle as, of it as well. Let's slow it down. Again, maybe keep the eyes up a little bit more right here on contact. But he's watch those toes going right back over to finish point. Again, that inside that cone inside of that bag is a yard inside. He never breaks stride, keeps the pad level down, and dips through. The last drill here is a drill that we call short drops. But no matter what the pass coverage is that you're going to teach, it's really simulating a zone drop. Now, whether you're going to whether guys have learned to, to turn and run to their spot drops or to drop off the quarterback, this, could, this drill can be utilized in any way, shape, or form. Now, most young guys we're going to be coaching are going to be learning some type of zone defense. So, matter, like I said, if, you, they're, if their coaches are teaching them in high school to turn and run or youth programs to turn and run to a spot, once they get there and they get their eyes back on the quarterback, this is really the key component of this drill. And as you can see, I, I'm simulating a quarterback right here with the ball on the drop. And the reason we're going to close this drill down, it's not going to, we're going to, I'm going to start right on the same line as them, is because right now we're teaching our guys to drop at the same pace and at the same time as the quarterback. So even if a kid was being taught to spot drop at a certain level, once he gets there, I think the point here is valid. You want to be able to read the quarterback's throwing shoulder. And as you can see, both guys, as I start to turn that direction, both guys start to flat line run along that line to go intercept the pass. Most young players, including college guys, what they want to do is as they see that quarterback turn, a lot of guys want to start coming downhill. and They don't realize that they're buying themselves more time if they flat line it to the throwing lane. If they try to come and intercept it in between inter or the intersection point, they're not giving themselves the best chance. The ball is going to be there quicker, 
and they're not giving themselves enough time to get underneath the pass. What these players do a good job of is reading that front shoulder. It turns, they open, start to run. And obviously, I think a big part of this is, is obviously putting the ball away. We talk all the time here about catch the ones they throw you. If, they, if you catch the ones they throw you, the offense throws to you, on a yearly basis, you're going to lead your conference to interceptions. And we're always talking to our guys about, you know, take, make the most of the opportunities here. And obviously, we're, we're working this drill off the goal line because we want them to catch that ball and finish through the end zone, finish through the goal line and score, put that ball away. Again, you can see the second rep. Again, the guys are doing a good job of dropping off the quarterback, and they're settling into their zone. Now, no matter what, if, again, if it's a spot drop, they're doing a good job of keeping their feet moving, their eyeballing the quarterback, the shoulder turns, they start to go. Now, the guy, to our, the guy that's furthest away from us is doing a good job. He's flat line running. You can see what I started to talk about before. The linebacker closest to us is starting downhill, and the ball hasn't been released yet. You would coach that guy up and, and have him understand why it's important to flatten out and intercept the ball at the point flat across uh, along that line. Again, these two, watch them come out of their breaks. They're doing a good job. They see it. They open up, and they're starting to go flat along the line. Let's slow it down. Flat. The guy furthest from us is coming downhill a little bit. His initial steps are good, then he starts to come downhill. One of the toughest things to teach a guy in underneath cover in zone coverage. Most guys think if they start downhill, they're going to pick that pass off easier. They have to understand that if they flat line it and full speed it out of the break, they're going to be in better shape. If you were teaching a guy to spot drop, let's just say we're, you're teaching a spot dropper and he was back at this point right now in his spot drop, again, it's the same, same premise. Get the eye, once you get to your spot drop, get the eyes back to where they're supposed to be. You see the shoulder turn, and now you see both guys start to come out. First steps are good, and even the guy furthest from, from us is starting to lean downhill a little bit. The guy closest to us is much better. The reason we only have this drill about 10 yards apart at its, at its peak is because it's actually harder to do that flat line coming off the break. It's harder to do it when you're closer to a guy than it is when you're further away in terms of understanding the drill for the young guys. Guys, I hope these drills are helpful to you. I do believe strongly that if you, if you rep these things every day, no matter what scheme a young linebacker is in, these are things that are going to be able to help them out. I do want to reemphasize that I do believe in the order that we put them in is the priority that you want to teach them. Again, if you feel strongly about you know flipping one here or there, I don't think it's a big deal, but I do think you have a good start and ending point. Good luck with the, with the young linebackers, and I wish you the best. I'm Coach Cadet, defensive line coach at Rutgers. We will start today with uh, some bag drills. As you can see, one of the things what we do as we're uh, the first starting point at, on our bag drills is that we talk about certain things, about hygiene numbers. As the guys come across, we want their eyes up. What we want them to do is hide the numbers, knees bent. And as they finish the drill, what we want them to do is dip and rip up the field, just like we're going to get off the blockers. So the emphasis is this is the first thing as we talk about hiding your numbers, running across the backs, picking your feet up, eyes high, do not be looking at where your feet are going at and dip and rip at the very end of finishing the bags up. Okay, now, the next part of the drill, what we'll do after we go through the bags is that we will put both feet in the hole, again, hiding your numbers, eyes up on the coach, so the eyes going straight ahead, and basically using our hands to play off cut blocks. Again, emphasizing going across the bags, Hiding your numbers, eyes up, looking at where you're going at, who can come and block you, and keep in great body position. Hands should be in a position to play off any kind of cut blocks. Working on good, great hip flexibility, staying high, playing cut blocks off. 
Now, the next drill, what we will go into is, is what we call our direction get-off drill. And as, as, as you can see, we have a green football. Coach Galliano has the football. It's a green football in our defensive scheme. Now we're working on attacking the line of scrimmage, leading with your hands, crowd the football as much as possible without being offsides, and everybody that's keying that football for movement. Lead with your hands and explode off the line of scrimmage with flat back, great body position, and being able to attack blockers and run by the coach. Now, we're saying attacking the line of scrimmage using your hands, hide your numbers, lead with your hands, and have your eyes on your location. Everybody's supposed to be keying, focusing on the football. Again, this is used for pass rush and also attacking the line of scrimmage to play run blocking. As you can see right there, this is a poor get off with this group of linemen right here. Everybody's laid off the football. So there's poor attention to the green football, which blends in with the turf. Very poor attacking, using leading with their hands and very late off the football, and, and this is not what we want in our defensive scheme. Again, explode by the coach as you're doing the drill. A lot of guys are going short on that drill right there in that last row. One more time. Get off. Key to football. Now, this is a direction end of it where uh, the coach is going to give a single to break either right or left. They're supposed to be full speed. Again, hide your numbers, attacking, leading with your hands, not popping up out of your stance, and then put the foot in the ground and plant and go as fast as you can. Say it was a run that's an outside run, and you're going to run like heck pursuing the football. Poor job on the get off right here. Very late. Again. They should be coming and reacting to an action. It's either going to be pass, it could be a right and left, but again, do the proper reaction to that action by the coach. This is not very good by this group of linemen. Attack. Hands up, rushing a quarterback. Again, coming off late. Direction, flatten out. Put your foot in the ground, flatten out, pursue the football. Not very good by this group as a, as a whole. Again, emphasis is crowd the football. Crowd the football. Attack. Eyes in the backfield as you, as you penetrate and make a decision on which course of action you need to do off the reaction of the back, which is the coach. This is a pretty good job. Again, points of emphasis, eyes on the football, backs flat, lead with your hands. Get direction key from the coach who is acting as the back. React, put your foot down in the ground and sprint to the football. Again, if it's a pass rush, you're leading with your hands, pass read, get your hands up. As we go to the next drill, which was a rapid fire drill, well, this is basically emphasizes as we go through the different phases, we've gone with hiding our numbers, using our hands, proper body position, emphasizing eye level. And now this next drill, what we call is rapid fire. We start both linemen, defensive linemen and offensive blocker, who's going to use, he starts the drill. Both numbers, are, both guys are low football position, the defender guy is hiding his numbers, and what we're trying to do is get the defender to go to the side of the hand, opening his hips, being violent with the hands, and dip and rip up the field to the butt, to the butt, landmark to the butt, and get his inside leg behind the outside leg of the blocker. So he wants to finish that drill with his butt clearing that blocker, being violent with his hands, hiding his numbers, 
get his body positioned directly behind the blocker so that that blocker cannot come back and reset and pass block on him. This drill is done four times in a row. Going to, op going to the side that the hand is th thrust out, getting his butt clear of that blocker, and then he finishes up back in the position, finishes up back in the position that he started. This is not very good finish by these two guys right here. But the emphasis on this is working pass rush, being violent with the hands. Stepping too wide, 61. He wants to keep it tight. So what you want to do is open your hips, dip and rip, and end up behi behind the leg of the blocker, behind the leg of the blocker, being violent with the hands, and go four times in a row because the legs will start burning a little bit, those thighs will start burning a little bit on as, the, as you go that number of reps. And you want to emphasize staying low, uh, staying behind your blockers. Again, this is a drill which we will emphasize more this spring. As we go into the next drill, pop up. Again, this is what we work on as, as far as our pass rush. Again, the emphasis on this is to hide your numbers. You take four bags, or five bags, one of them being the quarterback. They weave in and out, lining head up on the first bag, and will be violent with the hands and go this guy's going the wrong way. He needs to go outside, starting to drill and go outside, and go inside and outside on the, each bag, and each bag represents being against an individual blocker where the defender is going to club, dip and rip, being violent with his hands, hides his number, open his hips up, go around, and strip the last bag, which is the quarterback. Again, have some wiggle, being violent with the hands. Hide your numbers and dip and rip coming off that last turn and strip the quarterback so the inside hand is grabbing the bag and you're stripping down on the quarterback with the outside hand, just like if you were going around the offensive tackle. Dip, rip, turning the corner on that offensive tackle, turning the corner on that offensive guard and come in and strip the quarterback. As you can see, we're opening the hips. Now, not very good at being violent on the hands, not very good at exploding off the last back. Again, being violent and hide your numbers and have a lot of hand action. Have a lot of hand action right there on each back. Keep it nice and tight. Don't loop it as you're going around each back. Go straight at the back. This is a pretty good job as this guy's coming down. Coming at the back, open the hips, dip, rip, get skinny, open the hips, dip, rip, and explode around and strip the uh, ball out. Again, like on the line, head out the back. Each bag is representing a blocker. Open the hips, open the hips, open the hips, and dip and rip and explode off the last one. Now, as they finish up the back, as he comes around right here, what's missing as he goes and opens his hips right here, he's doing not a real good job of following through with the rip, that rip when he clears that back with that inside arm right there. He wants to dip and rip. And on that rip, take it to the sky. Emphasize, overemphasize in taking that rip to the sky to get out of a, of a grab by the tackle around the throat on a pass rush. So now, he is short arming his rip right there. He's pretty good on the dip. He's doing a pretty good job right there on the club, opening his hips, dip, and on the rip, he's short arming that, and that's where we want to emphasize it to the sky. Then you just switch the uh, quarterback over, that quarterback bag that represents the quarterback to the other side. Again, uh, let him do it from a head-up position. Club it. 
club it, and then what you want to do when he clubs it, dip, rip through, taking your arm to the sky, and now you go to the next blocker. And those bags are set up about four yards apart. So the emphasis to start out with at first is not how fast he can go through the bags, but to make sure they do a great job of sell, selling arm action, being violent, high the nimmers, and treat each individual bag as a different blocker. Not getting hung up on the blockers at the end. It's a poor job right there turning the corner. As he comes around and dip, dip and rip around that last one, he's going to come over and tackle the quarterback with his outside arm trying to strip the football, but he's going to grab the quarterback's shoulder pads with his inside arm. So that inside of the bag should be grabbed with his right arm, and he's coming over the top to strip with his left arm. Again, this is a pass rush emphasis. Everything's a progression as, until we go to working one-on-one -on -one with the offensive line or group into with the offensive line in certain drills. Now we'll take this and go quick pop-ups. Now the bags is no more than about a yard apart. Emphasis is how violent, how fast you can be doing the exact same drill. The only difference is we've taken the quarterback out of the picture, and it's going to be five bags, and we go five bags in a row. Hide your numbers, be violent with the arms, open, close your hips very quickly, and inside out being violent and making sure you dip and rip. How fast can you open your and close your hips, hide your numbers, and still progressing towards the quarterback? Not a real good job with that one. No opening and closing the hips with uh, 95. All the drill is is reduce it down from four yards to a yard and weave it inside and out, being violent with those hands. Pretty good job right here with the hands. Again, pretty good job with the hands as he weaves in and out. Now, again, emphasizing that dip, but everything's happening so much quicker. Action's quicker. It's almost like you're throwing your body as you throw those licks in there with the, being the club. The club, clubbing those bags out of the way, opening and closing those hips quickly with power. Again, five bags in a row. Quick working on quick feet, hiding your numbers, hand being violent action and opening and closing your hips in a straight line without a whole lot of bobbing and weaving. Skinning as tight as you can to that bag. Again, be careful. Make sure that they're opening and closing the hips. You don't want to keep going through there with your hips square. That's not the point of the drill. The drill is to open and close the hips. Now the next drill is the hoops. On the hoops right here, what we do is we line them up about two yards apart, and this is a chase pattern. The object is for the, the second guy to catch the first guy. Now both guys should be moving on off the quarterback's foot uh, in this particular case, we don't have a ball movement right there, which is uh, ideally what you like to do is have the green football again, start the green football where both guys can see it, and they're moving on movement, so both guys move on the same thing. Right now, the first guy has an advantage because he is moving on himself unless I'm saying set, and I can't remember on this drill if, it, if I'm saying set. Ideally, though, you want to do both guys to see a football and move on a football. Now, as you turn the hoops, as you turn the hoops, again, it's just think in terms of going around the tackle. How can you drop your inside shoulder to turn that circle, still playing off your outside foot without stepping on the hoop and slipping down? So that as you go around the hoops now, as he goes around the hoops to his left, drop the inside shoulder, 
You get the body down so you can make that turn, and that's just like you would do if you were going inside out, rushing from the re right or left side of the offensive tackle, whichever side of the football you were rushing from. In this case, it gives you an opportunity to change the body position. Once he goes around the other hoop, as you can see, 94 is having a hard time dropping his inside shoulder, which would be his right shoulder, dropping there as he goes around the circle. And he gets caught by the second guy, even though he had a great start when he started. Again, another pass rush drill. Line up. You try to do a good job of matching guys' speed with each other. Now, let me see if they should be moving on my foot. Again, moving. First guy comes out jumping. Second guy now, as they go around, who can keep that shoulder dipping as they go around? Playing off the outside foot and dipping that inside shoulder so he's not standing tall as he goes around. Too much separation between the two defender, uh, two uh, pass rushes right there. Need to be a little bit tighter. This is a mismatch with the first guy. All right, you can see as the second guy goes around, he's baby feet, baby steps. He's having a hard time turning. The first guy is turning him pretty good, dropping his inside shoulder as he goes this way, his left shoulder. Now as he goes around the second way, it takes him a little time to turn the second hoop and gives the, in, the second guy a chance to catch up some. Again, be careful that they don't cheat and get too much separation, the first guy from the second guy. Again, movement, both guys should be moving on the same movement key, which should be a football if you're able to have one. Or you can use your foot to move and let both of them see the foot move. Okay, not a bad job. These two guys are fairly matched up with the same kind of foot speed as they come out of the gate. Probably a little bit too much separation between the first and second guy. But both should be moving on the same movement key so you can get a true reaction to them reacting, coming out. Staying low, not little bitty baby steps, but staying low as they turn and run, dropping inside hips and shoulder. The object's to catch the guy. Again, as they go around the tackle, you can see where it can be lost or won at if you think in terms of a pass rush. As the guy goes around the circle right here, if he's able to take and turn that corner, as just imagine it being an offensive tackle, turning that corner, dipping that shoulder, and exploding off those turns right there, covering ground. That's where it's lost at right there, having to gather his momentum again when he had a chance to catch him. Again, this is a pass rush emphasis. The drill also can, this is too much separation between the two defenders. The drill off, that we're doing figure eights on this drill right here. You can also take four hoops and put, put them in there and do a clover leaf type where they go have to go in and out. This drill can also be used for conditioning for your defensive line at the end of practice. Get off by both of these guys are very similar. Where the game is lo uh, uh, lost at a little bit is when the guy, first guy has to take and gather himself as he goes around. The second guy is able to make up some difference. But again, this is not a fair assessment because there's too much separation between the two. Reduce it down to about a yard and a half, two yards at the most. Again, here's the hoops again. We got a cheater on the second guy. Again, we need to have a, a, a starting point where both of them are starting on the same thing. And just have them do a complete figure eight where they finish up running by the coach. As you can see, the second guy right there, he is really gathering himself as he tries to turn the corner with a little bit of baby steps, and that's where this totally separation takes place between the, 
the first uh, guy and the second guy. Use a comb or something as a starting point so that they line up about the distance that you want it to start with. And then try to match it up with two guys that are uh, similar in foot speed. This guy's cheating up front. That's why you need to have them start on the football so they don't, they don't cheat. As you see on this one right here, they were lost when 88 had to gather himself going around the first hoop. Lost his balance. Objects to run, dip, and continue to run and gain ground. Uh, number one, the first guy did more separation from the second guy as the race went on. He turned the cones a lot better. And that is another phase of trying to get a guy to turn the corner. The RK, he catches him. He le reaches out. Whatever he needs to do for the second guy to catch the first guy. Reaches out, lean at him, strain to get to that guy to catch up to him. All right. Here's the prime example. Two guys coming out. One. Both leaving virtually the same time, but watch the second guy really strain to reach out there and get him. That would be just like going through the bag drills. As you came off the last bag, a strain out reaching for that quarterback, reaching out hard for him. Great body position by 91, uh, 94, not very good body position, trying to turn the hoops, standing tall with his inside shoulder instead of dipping, and really struggling to get through. As you continue to do this, you will continue to get better at making turns. 